Hi, I'm Roxanne Richardson, and this is Technique Tuesday. If you have ever wanted to design something from scratch or have wanted to add to or change the stitch pattern in an existing project, this video will give you an introduction for how to approach that process. It's the first in a series of videos about designing your own knitting projects. A lot of the things that I knit for myself are not knit from patterns. They are either things that I design myself or they are modifications of patterns. Oftentimes I'll start with a plain stockinette garment or accessory and then I will modify it by using different stitch patterns in order to get the result that I want. In every single case, every one of the things you see here is something that I designed myself by first starting with the stitch pattern that I wanted to use and knowing the basic sh size and shape that I wanted to fill with that stitch pattern. That's what I'm going to show you today is how to get started with the main part of whatever it is that you want to create yourself, how to um, fill that that shape in the size that you want with the stitch pattern that you want. The two most basic shapes that we might want to start with in a pattern is either some kind of a, a rectangle or some kind of a tube. So rectangles might be used for dishcloths, blankets, scarves, sweaters that you're knitting in pieces, all kinds of things. And those things might stand on their own or they might be seamed together to another similar shape. Tubes are used for things like uh, socks, hats, mittens, sweaters that are knit in the round. So let's start with these, these two basic shapes, a rectangle or square that's 10 inches by 10 inches and a tube that is 10 inches long and 10 inches in circumference. And we'll look at, at the things that we need to think about when we are filling this space with our stitch patterns. So let's start with stockinette and let's look at a couple of different gauges and how that might work. Let's say we are working with, we, we've done a gauge swatch, knit up a little swatch. You've figured out that you are getting five stitches per inch. It's pretty easy to see that if you want something that is 10 inches wide and each of those inches that you are filling up with stockinette has five stitches in it, then you can say five stitches per inch times 10 inches is equal to 50 stitches. So it's pretty easy to fill that up. And likewise, for a tube that you wanted to be uh, 10 inches in circumference, you could also use 50 stitches. What if your gauge was something like 4.75 stitches per inch, not five stitches per inch? Well then, when you multiply that, that by 10, it's gonna be 47.5. So you're gonna either have to round up or down. So 47 or 48 would work again for either one of these. There's a lot of rounding off in knitting. Oftentimes you can't get exactly the dimension that you want. It's going to be slightly off. And in this case, it's going to be off by you know, an eighth of an inch, your hand knitting is probably not precise enough for that to, to make any kind of difference. If we want to use a stitch pattern, one of the sources for stitch patterns can be a stitch dictionary. So this is one example of a stitch dictionary. So let's look at the stitch patterns on this page. Here we have a pattern called flags that is a multiple of nine stitches. And they're showing a picture of what the right side of the work and the wrong side looks like. They're basically you know, mirror images of each other. It has written instructions and then it has charted instructions. The important thing to see is that you need a multiple of nine stitches so that you can work complete repeats of this stitch pattern, whether you are working flat or in the round. So let's assume that our gauge for this stitch pattern is the same as it was in stockinette, five stitches per inch. We saw with stockinette, we needed 50 stitches. If we have a nine stitch repeat and we need to work full repeats of the stitch pattern, that means we could do five repeats times nine stitches and that would give us 45 stitches. That's only nine inches wide. Well, if we did six repeats times nine stitches per repeat, then we'd have 54 stitches. 
and that is almost 11 inches. And the same is going to be true in the round, that we can, in order to have you know, full repeats, we can either have something um, that's 45 stitches or 54 stitches. So this is an issue that often comes up in selecting knitting patterns and then trying to fill an exact space. In some cases, it may not be important that you have something that's exactly 10 inches wide. It might be okay to have it off one inch or another. But if you're making a garment, if you're trying to do something like a hat or a sweater, it might not be acceptable to be off by that much. So there might be things that you need to do in order to achieve the exact width you want. If you are uh, working two identical pieces that are going to be seamed, you might decide you need some edge stitches that will just divide the front from the back. If you're working something like a hat, that might not work well for you. Sometimes there's some compromises you need to make, or you might just need to choose a different pattern if the size is really important. So far, we've been focusing on filling in the width of our stitch pattern. We also need to fill in the length. Now, I didn't mention this with the stockinette, but because every row of stockinette looks identical, you can in stockinette just knit until you have 10 inches worth of fabric and then move on to the next section. But when you're working with a stitch repeat, um, you might really care about vertical symmetry. I tend to care about vertical symmetry. I want full pattern repeats, or at least I want to end at some point in the vertical repeat at a, at a natural breaking point. So in order to figure out how many rows we need, we need to know our row gauges. So we were talking about five stitches per inch, which is really common for a worsted weight yarn, and seven rows per inch is really common in that same yarn weight. Again, these are hypothetical gauges. This is just an example. If I wanted 10 inches worth of uh, fabric with seven rows per inch, that would mean I need somewhere around 70 rows. And again, we can fudge it a little bit in one direction or another, particularly if having something exactly 10 inches isn't important. So let's look at this stitch pattern again. What we can see from the chart and also the written instructions is that this is a 16 row repeat, but we can see that it's kind of divided into half. You've got a uh, one rectangle that has an angle this way and then the next one goes this way. So we can do full repeats, but if we need to, we can do just an additional eight rows in order to get closer to our target row count. So with a 16 row repeat, we can do four repeats and that will bring us up to 64 rows. Then we could do another one of those eight rows, like a half a repeat for this particular pattern, and that will give us 72 rows. At seven rows per inch, that's really like a quarter of an inch difference. That is completely acceptable. So this could be a good pattern for filling up that space in terms of the length. So here is another stitch pattern that's called framed ovals. And in this case, it says that we need a multiple of six stitches plus three stitches. This means that in order to have the symmetry in this stitch pattern, that you can use any multiple of six stitches, so six, 12, 18, whatever, 36, 60, anything you want. But whatever that number is, you're gonna add three stitches to it. If you were gonna use a multiple of six stitches, that would be 36 stitches, and then you'd add three, and that would be 39. That is when you are knitting flat. And you can see in this chart that um, what this looks like. So the repeat is this six stitches. So you'd the empty boxes are knits and the ones with dots are pearls. I highly recommend if you don't know how to read a knitting chart that you learn to do that. They're very handy, especially if you're designing your own things to kind of visually see what's going on. I have a series of videos on reading charts and interpreting chart symbols. The important thing is the repeat is within these boxes. And so you've got three knits and three pearls and you would repeat that across three knits, three pearls, three knits, three pearls. And then when you got to the very end, you do another uh, three knits. And that's to create this symmetry when you are knitting flat so that things don't look off kilter. When you are knitting in the round, you can just work the repeats. 
you don't need these extra stitches. So let's look at how the math works out when we want to use a stitch pattern like this when we're working flat versus in the round. So if we are knitting flat, we need to a multiple of six stitches plus three stitches. So uh, what can we do? We can do eight repeats times six stitches, that's 48. And then we add our three stitches and that's 50, and that's 51. That is very close to the 50 stitches that we had with stockinette. And again, this is assuming that our stitch gauge is the same for the stitch pattern as it was in stockinette. If we were going to do it in the round though, we don't need these extra stitches. So we could do uh, six times eight. So we could do 48. We could be just a couple of stitches under. It's pretty close. Um, if we did nine repeats, we'd have 54, which is really a, about an inch bigger. So if we had 48 stitches, we'd be uh, just over nine and a half inches in the round. And if we um, did nine, we'd have 11 inches in the round. So again, it depends on how well this needs to fit, how much tolerance you have for that kind of difference. Because as I said, knitting is a lot of rounding and fudging of numbers in order to make uh, stitch counts and repeats work as aesthetically as possible while also getting the fit that you want. So how would this pattern fit vertically in this shape? Well, this particular pattern, Ha, is a 10 row repeat. If we need something that's 10 inches in length, and again, let's use our example of seven rows per inch. Um, we need somewhere around 70 rows in order to get our 10 inches. And luckily we can do that exactly with a 10 row repeat. We can get exactly 70 rows. So this pattern works really well for something flat. It works okay for something in the round. You can get within a couple of stitches. And for both of them, you can get exactly the length that you need. There's obviously more to designing and modifying projects to incorporate stitch patterns than what I presented today. Future videos will discuss topics like what goes on outside the boundaries of our basic shape, whether it's seams, borders, or other stitch patterns. How to transition smoothly from one stitch pattern to another, how to approach maintaining a stitch pattern while incorporating shaping like increases and decreases, and what kinds of things you need to think about when combining or substituting stitch patterns in a project when those stitch patterns have very different gauges. Let me know down in the comments what questions you have about designing or modifying projects. If you're interested in learning how to knit a few basic projects without using a pattern, you might be interested in these videos over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.